Let's turn now to our psalms for today. To read responsibly, 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 responsibly. <laughs> Psalm 126. And I did look up the page numbers this week. In your view, I was actually found on page 967. Psalm 126. Actually, since there's so few of us, let's read this in unison. Psalm 126, a song of the saints. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Nineveh. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Our main text today, our gospel text, is from Mark chapter 4. On page 1560 in the Pew Bibles. And this is a longer reading. It's uh, most of the chapter, chapter 4, including the parable of the sower and the lamp. And it ties into the psalm we just read with the, the sheaves and taking, going out with seed and coming back with sheaves. Mark chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching he said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, never hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Quotation from Isaiah. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, and the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Some thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times what was sown. He said to them, Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on a stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed. Whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. 
Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and even more. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in its head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again, he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in the shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of the Lord. So we have quite a few farming analogies here. And Jesus spoke, it says here, in parables. He very rarely spoke directly about what was going on. But he spoke in a way that people would think about that story. And go, what was that? And for those to whom the Lord opened it up, they were able to understand. Now, I don't really have time to talk in depth about all of these, <laughs> but I want to just, just touch on a few points here. It's a bit different in our modern day with, with uh, these big planters that go along and have everything digitized and know exactly how much to put in each furrow right before they used to scatter the seed or I know in my little tiny garden patch I put every one in <laughs> covered over right I'm not scattering seed because yeah I suppose there's enough of the seed packet but then I have way too much for my little garden put in each seed carefully there they scatter the seed so farming ways have changed quite a bit role of the farmer is still to plant the seed, right? That part of farming doesn't really change. You plant it, you try and take care of it, but you don't really make it grow, do you? As a farmer, you can't pull it on it, pull on it, make it come up faster, make its roots go down deeper. It doesn't really work that way, does it? That plant grows on its own. The Lord provides the water, provides the rain, provides the sun, and we hope something comes up, but you yourself can't do much about it. And you know, that's one of the both challenges and encouragements that come out of this passage is as, as both a pastor, a preacher, and as a Christian in the pew, <laughs> wherever we are in life, this is both encouraging and challenging to accept because we have the opportunity to share the Word of God, to scatter that seed. But we can't do anything, really, <laughs> other than keep putting seed out there, right? To make it grow. Only God can do something with that seed in people's heart, with that Word. And that can be both incredibly joyous and incredibly heartbreaking depending on what happens with that seed. And that's both within and without the church, right? Inside the church and outside the church. It goes back to that first parable. What happens when it's tested? Not everyone responds to the, the word of God in the same way. Some fall away. Some hear it they get snatched away right away. And that's heartbreaking. Those are the ones we tend to see.
seed will soften and go. Yeah, that's what happened. Others, it seems to take root, they're, they're joyful, and then something happens in life. And they haven't grounded themselves, or we haven't grounded ourselves in, in Scripture, and we get blown away. Challenges of life and of this world of challenges of good and evil distract us from who God is and what God's promises are to us. Because God doesn't promise a life of ease and no problems. He says those who follow after him will, will endure suffering. We will go through trials and, and that's not an easy thing for people to hear. I know it's not an easy thing for me to hear either. And for some, it takes root and grows deep. And honestly, for us, personally, in our, in our own walk, I think the only thing that we can really do is to delve into the Word for deep. And it's something I'm not always good at. I admit that. <laughs> it's not always easy to have the discipline to pick this up and read more, but you know what? It produces fruit in my life when I read more. When I immerse myself in the Word of God. When I hear it from others. I, it, it's something I have to do intentionally as a pastor, is hear the Word from others. <laughs> you, you come and hear it here, there's other ways also to hear God's Word. Whether it's reading it or listening to it. So in our own lives, to put down roots is to hear the word, to share our stories with one another. How is God working in your life? How have you seen him work in the past? To encourage one another. And as we get the other role as well, to be the ones who scatter seed. Or to take in the harvest. When people are going, I have these questions been wondering about Jesus. What does this mean? Those are both some of the scariest moments <laughs> and the most joyful moments is to be able to share and explain who God is, who Jesus is, and what that means to people, what that means to you. Because really, sharing our own stories makes the biggest difference. Now, I, one of the reasons I stayed up late last night was I was having an online discussion with someone who is a complete agnostic. And we can look at the same information and he interprets it completely different. <laughs> and what makes sense to me as a scholar, looking at the testament, the testimony of the early church and of, of disciples, those who wrote down the scripture, I go, yes. We have the latest of the Gospels was written within John's lifetime by 90 AD. That's within 60 years of the events of Scripture. And I go, of course, this is a first-hand eyewitness account, and it's signed. That's the latest. We have stuff written down. Some of the Gospels were written down within 10, 20 years, probably. We know at least by 30 years after the events. They shared their stories. They told one another. And that's when the church started dispersing. And when the Jews were driven out of Jerusalem after the fall of Jerusalem, that they had to have the story shared in a written form. And they wrote it down. And I go, there's, there's all these things that, that add up to make me go, yes, this is true. This is real. And this... Other individual looks at the same thing and goes, no, these are, you're assuming this. <laughs> There's no way these are, people attributed these to these people. It wasn't written by these guys. Doesn't want to see. Even though, yes, Greek, everyone in Israel at the, that time needed to know Greek if they wanted to do any form of business. So was it their heart telling them? But they all spoke Greek because they had to conduct business. 
they had to go buy stuff in the marketplace. Mark, which we're reading now, is the easiest one for a new Greek scholar to read from because it's the most basic Greek there is. This is a guy who was unlettered, and yet he knew enough Greek to write this. It's the easiest Greek for me to read, <laughs> and I'm not a great Greek scholar. John is complicated. <laughs> Luke is complicated because they were very well educated and they write the high academic Greek, which I find a bit more challenging. <laughs> Mark wrote as not a scholar, but as one who saw these events. Who saw these events take place. And I can see that and go, yes, this happened. Satisfies both the head and the heart. But without the Lord doing something to that word and opening up my eyes, I don't, I wouldn't see that either. There are many who look at the same thing that we do and go, no way. They're not satisfied. They, they cannot see. Their eyes are not open to who God is, who Jesus was. And I think partly that's because if we accept that Jesus was who he said he was, that he really was and really is, this man who was also God, who walked on this earth, who died on the cross, who rose to life, who is alive, and who died for us, it changes our world. And it transforms how we must respond. Because if it's true, And I say it is. And scripture says it is, and you all say it is, right? If it's true, then it changes the world. And it changes how we respond to the world around us. So my challenge for you and for me is to read more and ask the Lord that he would reveal his word to us. And just one little bit more. Um, I don't often share my old testimony. I don't know if I have other than once down here. <laughs> but I know for myself, growing up, it was something that I wanted to know from a very early age. Why do I believe why do my parents believe what they believe? Why do these people around me believe something completely different? Some, something must be true. But they can't both be true because they're so at odds with one another. And all the world likes to say is, oh, Jesus, he was just a good guy. Or maybe he was someone they made up. Or, oh, these Christians are kind of crazy. <laughs> It's, it's a draw in this world to look up something new, just to go after things that are new or things that are ancient. Like Buddhism is, is, the, the, is still the popular one, new age stuff, or the, the spirituality thing is, oh, I'm spiritual because I'm meditating on random different books around opening myself up to different things. Hinduism is popular. Islam is popular. Even now the Norse religions are popular. Going back to ancient things, Egyptian religions are popular because they go, oh, well, this was cool. So let's go and research that. The Greek religions are once again becoming popular. But they can't all be true. <coughs> There can be only one truth. And that's what I kept coming back to again and again. There can be only one truth. 
So someone's got it right and someone's got it wrong. <laughs> and for me personally, I had to go out and keep reading and going, do I believe this? It has to make a connection here and it has to make a connection here. And over and over again, I kept coming back to, yes, this is true. And because it's true, it has, it's changed my life. And I accept it intellectually, but I also have seen God among them. And I have felt his spirit, his presence in my heart and in my life. And seen God at work in people around me. And so I cannot dismiss the Word of God. If I could, I should not be up here, right? <laughs> but in order to be true, to have integrity in my speech and in my life, I need to, to share this. And the challenge for me as a Christian is to, of course, make my life match up with that. Ask the Lord for help to make my life match up with that. And my willingness to share and match up with that. But I believe it is true. I know it is true here and here. And I challenge all of you to challenge your faith as well. If you have questions, ask them whether of each other or of scripture, or ask me. I don't have all the answers, but God does. And we can work on finding them together. So I invite you to question, to search, to ask God for answers, to ask scripture for answers, to dig deeper. And that the, the Lord will produce a harvest you know, going back to being that farmer, <laughs> we get to plant as Christians, we, we throw out the seed, but we're really planting one at a time, and God does all the work. It takes a lot of the stress off. <laughs> we can't do anything to make people Christians other than to share God's work in our life. And to share his word, to share our experiences of God working. And God does the rest. This is good news that God does the rest, right? Take the stress off. Because <laughs> God is powerful and he is able.